Wilson. James Reed, and I make fly fishing rods. Like you asked, what is the what is the culture? What do I think the culture of fly fishing is? And if that same question was, you know, asked, what does fly fishing mean to you? One of those is easy to answer, and one of those makes your forehead hurt. It's just you know, very. The adventure of a river, because like I can, I can see that up there and then it turns away and I can see that and then it turns away and I can't see what's around the corner there. So when I go down there, then I get to find out what's there. Is it, is it, is it beautiful? Is it better? Is it the fishiest looking water on the planet? I don't know, because I can't see it. So I got to go down and find out, right? And that, that little bit of a adventure element is always like, why the fuck do you walk 10 kilometers in the rain on the fucking river, right? Because oh, well, I want to see what's down there. There could be something better there. So, you know, you just, that's a big part of it, I think. Because like you'll walk around and just absolute freezing ass cold, like drenched, it's dripping off your nose, your rain gear's 12 years old and it's got duct tape on it and stuff. And so it doesn't exactly work to keep you dry. It does hold moisture in exceptionally well. Um, so yeah, why, why would anybody do that? I don't know, that's, um, that's craziness. If it was different, I guess. Like, uh, if you weren't, if you weren't fishing, like if you're doing that for some other reason, that would be maybe you know, fucking the the insane stamp. Don't go insane. Yeah. But you're never not somewhere absolutely beautiful, and you're never not somewhere without adventure around the next corner. And that's so key. I don't care if you've fished the same river for 25 years. Rivers are never the same as the last time you were there or any other time you've ever been there. They're constantly changing. And I think that's what draws people to them. You know, the, the people anyways that are, and you know, unfortunately drawn to them. Uh, <laughs> That's nice. That's nice in there.
yeah, you never you never know what's there. You never know you never know if there's a fish in the water you're fishing, but you fish it the same way regardless of whether you know there's a fish there or not because you don't know. You're trying to find out. And there's adventure and mystery in that. There's adventure and mystery uh, you know, like like I was saying, it took what, the next bend of the river, what's down there, right? There's adventure and mystery making a plan to, you know, do a float and and then it gets dark and you're still nowhere near where you plan to take out and so you get all your gear and your boat and you bash it through the forest because you're pretty sure that the road is you know, over there, maybe a kilometer, and uh, you know, and then you make yourself a little lean-to under your boat and you sleep there for the night and wake up and w walk the remaining six kilometers out to the road, uh, you know. Maybe we're all crazy people. Maybe we're all crazy people. But some of the best people I've ever met are crazy people too, so I'll fucking take it. Okay, so, um, you know, during the course of the filming, I've noticed that you have a lot of memories on your walls through your pictures, through the flies, through the reels, from your experiences in this thing we call fly fishing. Yeah, I mean, certainly there's a lot of uh, uh, paraphernalia around uh, my shop, photographs and uh, knickknacks and, and uh, you know, old fishing items and tackle and you know you you name it kind of thing around and they all um have some significance or a memory for me uh, and they've all been accumulated kind of along the way in this uh you know fly fishing life um you know this is a fly wallet that i often carry with me on the river i never use any of the flies in it, but I carry it around with me nonetheless. Um, in it are um, flies that have been tied for me by other people, whether they be close friends of mine, um, uh, clients or patrons that have gifted to me, um, or any combination of those two. Um, you know, flies like, like this. Um, which, you know, is a bit big to fish, of course, but uh, nonetheless, it's, you know, something that was gifted to me and, and uh, reminds me of that person and, and I enjoy carrying around with me because why not carry more stuff, right? All your fly fishing gear has a thousand pockets in it. You have to fill them up. Um, and tackle like this reel that was made for me by my very close friend of many, many years, um, Mark Schamberg. Um, I have fished an ungodly amount. It, it used to be quite shiny. <laughs> it now has scuffs. It's um, went for a, a ride with my rod out of a boat uh, and got sunk in the Dean and retrieved. And, um, and ever since it was made for me, I've fished it more than any other reel I own. And there's a fair few of them around and just the fact that I love everything about it and that my friend made it for me is 
the reason why I, I use it so much. Um, you know, those experiences that we have with our friends on the river, whether it be a great day fishing, you know, those kind of days that come around once every couple of years and you just happen to be lucky enough to be there on that day or the, you know, the polar opposite of that, the, the, the worst day ever fishing, the worst weather, you got lost, you had to hike your boat out, um, you know, for kilometers and kilometers, um, all those shared experiences um, with our friends uh, really make that culture of fly fishing for me. Um, old tackle, I love old tackle. Um, this rod is absolutely stunningly gorgeous piece of work. Um, and all of us rod makers, reel makers, anybody in this, you know, sort of fly fishing industry, um, is just building upon what's already happened before in the past. So, you know, I, I do borrow some of my aesthetics and always have from this particular rod company from the past. Um, and because I've always thought it to just be absolutely gorgeous and proportions spot on and, and simple and clean, but classy and attractive. And that's, you know, that another connection to the past, which is part of my culture of fly fishing. Fuck you, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm leaving that in. That's fine. You need bloopers. Oh, no. I, do. I need the assault charge. <laughs> <laughs> With your rods, um, I kind of asked you the question the other night, like when I was looking at the stuff, your components, and I noticed that you like the down locking. Can like, you explain why why you tend to favor a down locking rail seat? Okay, like a down locking versus an up locking seat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, keen observation. Um, yeah, definitely. On all the rods that I make, I prefer a down locking seat on them. And the reason for that being is we all use the weight of our reel on, on our rod, doesn't matter what it is, to balance that rod in our hand and make it perform the way we want. Um, we don't want it to be tip heavy, we want it to be ass heavy. The rods I make are made of bamboo, and even though I go to great lengths to make them as light as I possibly can, they are still heavier than a comparable composite rod. So by using a downlocking reel seat, I'm effectively moving the weight of your reel further away from the fulcrum point of the rod where you would hold it. So that weight will assist in balancing the rod and it'll make it feel lighter than it actually is. Um, I use them on two-handed rods. I use them on single-handed rods. Um, on single-handed rods, I like having the ability to move my hand around to multiple spots on the grip depending on what I want the rod to do, if I want it to be shorter, if I want it to be longer, how I want to power it. That's supposed to be off. <laughs> um, so getting the reel far enough out of the way would allow me to choke up on a single-handed rod, effectively making it longer. That also changes where the rod is being powered from, how you're interacting with that rod. If you're up here at the top of a grip, 
where your hand is is where the rod stops, it stops bending there. If you move your hand down, you're allowing the rod to bend deeper and you can achieve more power out of it as well as the additional length if you want. If you've got something that you're trying to avoid behind you or you're just trying to cast really far, like there's a fish rising and you know it's 10 feet away from where you can possibly cast to, then that buys you wiggle room to make the rod work for you. So that's a lot of the reason why, that's all the reason actually why I use down locking seats on everything. Bum, bum, bum. favorite parts of making a rod for for someone but this is definitely one of those most favorite parts um, because this is the only part of a, of a fly rod that you touch when you cast it and so it's it's integral to how you perceive not only the rod, but more importantly, the line. It is your only interface between you and your fly line. And so, I probably spend way too much time on making sure that this is absolutely perfect and feels exactly the right way to give that person the best possible chance of feeling every single bit of their line. elements of our sport um, well I don't exactly think that fly fishing is a sport um, per se so it doesn't really make sense to me in that fashion um, as far as like the en enduring elements of our sport would be um, I would think they would be history um, I would think they would be um, interaction with nature um, you know you're, you're hardly ever in a place when you're fly fishing that isn't beautiful uh, natural, you know. Um, reflection uh, is a part of fly fishing, I think. Um, I don't know that it could be successfully executed without some degree of um, reflection, whether it be on you know your past. Uh, experiences on the river, which to a large degree dictate, you know, the, the, the choices you make on any given day fishing. So I think that would definitely be uh, an aspect of the sport. Um, skill, 
is an aspect of the sport. You know, your quote unquote success as a fly fisherman largely depends upon skill and experience. So the more of each of those that you have to draw upon, um, potentially more you can get from your time on the river or on the lake or participating in this activity, I guess, of fly fishing. So and we were talking about, what were we talking about? Affordability of a rod. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, I was saying I've never made a perfect rod. And it's, um, you know, the amount of time it would take to make a perfect rod, to have every um, cosmetic aspect of a rod to be perfect, um, would take an astronomical amount of time, three to four times what it already takes me, which is a great deal of time uh, to make a fly rod. So um, how would you charge somebody, you know, appropriately for that? Like, how would you charge somebody for 120 hours of work to make a fly rod? Uh, it would make them so, so dear, like so expensive. Uh, and when I, started out making fly rods for for others um and you know had to come up with some kind of pricing to, to charge people um i had always worked on the theory that i don't want to price myself out of the rods that i make i wouldn't want to you know at the time i was working as a car mechanic uh unticketed so you know I'm an avid fly fisherman. I love my fly fishing. I'd really like to have a nice, a nice rod handmade for me. Um, I like fishing bamboo, so that's what I would want to buy. Um, and you know, if I put put my pennies away for a year or two years and and save up, um, then I can I can afford that. You know, me working as a you know, Joe Blow, stiff kind of thing. Uh, so that was always the idea behind sort of pricing, you know, and, and we were the, the pursuit of perfection, you know, I joke with Ryan, my apprentice all the time. Uh, we have a little saying that goes, you know, we, uh, we strive for perfection and accept our mediocrity. So that's, you know, the interesting things about that. That's not fucking tea in there, is it? <laughs>
But I like that, I enjoy that, that's fun, you know? A little bit of smoke coming out of your ears because you're thinking too much every once in a while ain't, ain't bad. But, uh, you know, the culture of fly fishing, I'm doing it right now. I'm sitting on a fucking rock by the river, drinking a beer. I just fished through a run. I didn't even hook the cameraman and I'm happy as I could possibly be right now. And so maybe that's the culture of fly fishing for me, just happiness. Now, no more fucking questions, but. I'm Ryan Height, uh, manager of Michael and Young Fly Shop. Been uh, in the fly fishing industry for most of my life, most of my adult life anyway. And uh, yeah, I've been running Michael and Young Fly Shop out of British Columbia for 25 years I've been there, managing for like 20-ish. culture of fly fishing. It is, in my mind, incredibly 